Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to give you five, five, one, two, three, four, five tips for intuitive writers on how to keep going and make things work right. So, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so now, and hit that bell so you get notified when I have new videos out. And also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and we will get started here in a moment. So there's not a lot out there about intuitive writing. And by this I mean what is commonly referred to as pantsers. And uh, I also use the term organic writer because I don't like the term pantsers. But lately I've been using the word intuitive. An intuitive writer is someone who doesn't sit down and plan out the entire book. And usually we don't write outlines, <clears throat> although I do work with a reverse outline, as I mentioned in a separate video somewhere. Um, we don't plot out the entire book. Sometimes we'll plot out some highlights. We'll write a bullet list of highlights. But pretty much we sit down and we have the basic concept in mind and we start writing. And we write through and then we finish writing and then we edit and there's our book. Not so easy to explain how to write when you're an intuitive writer because it's such a personal process that you can't sit there and go, well, here is how you make a character because we don't make characters that way. Here is how you create a setting. Well, we write the setting that shows up that feels like it needs to be there for a long time even though i have what, 70 some books under my belt there was a part of me that still felt like i was doing it wrong because i wasn't writing the way most of the writers i know right we don't write the way other people do we process subconsciously not a lot out there is written on being an intuitive writer. So since I am one and I get a lot of writing questions, I thought I would do a series of videos on being an intuitive writer and ways to make it easier or just videos to help validate the way you write. Because a lot of people think it's odd or they don't think that it's a legitimate way to write. Or they've just never heard of it and they look at you and go, you just write? And it's like, yeah, I just do it. I sit down and I just write. And the story is there. There's a lot more that goes into that. But today, today I'm going to give you five hints, five tips to make life a little easier when you are an intuitive writer. Number one, you need to fill the well. This means you have to recharge, and it depends on how recharging works for you. For me, it's watching a lot of media. I love movies. I love TV. I do love to read. Um, I don't get enough time to read, but and I'm often tired at the end of the day, but I love to read. Um, I love theater. I recharge by meditation, by working with my magic actual magic, not stage magic. Um, I recharge by playing with the cats, talking to a friend, watching a movie, reading book, watching, binge watching a series. I'm currently binge watching the new season of uh, Married at First Sight. <clears throat> does that inspire me? Not on the surface, but somehow it does beneath the surface. Um, it also fascinates me. It's like this cultural, you know, oddity in our our culture here today to marry someone you've never met. But honestly, people talk about my whirlwind romances in my books. I lived a whirlwind romance. I knew my husband a week when I moved into his room. And we hadn't even been dating that week. I moved into his room the first night we expressed an interest in each other. I've been there 28 years. What can I say? Um, you don't necessarily have to know the person you marry. 
granted, we didn't get married for months later. He did propose two months later, and then we got married five months later, mainly because I wanted to wait so we could have an outdoor wedding, and it was winter at that point. But, you know, um, yeah, I, I suppose the show speaks to that part of myself, who's willing to jump into things. So, recharge. Rev up your motors when you're feeling a little empty. Go watch something, go read something, listen to music, dance, do something that makes you feel vibrant and alive again, or that makes you feel like, oh wow, that's cool, I, I feel ready to write again. Tip number two, don't stop to edit. That is one of the primary things that I think kills intuitive writers' work. Um, stopping to edit while you're in the middle of a writing session will halt the flow. It will make you trip, it will make you stumble, you start thinking and trying to analyze, is this right? Did I do this right? Should I change this? Should I? And when an intuitive writer just needs to be writing, you just need to sit down and write and let it come out. Worry about the editing later. It's okay. You can change things. They're not set in stone. So don't stop to edit in the middle of a writing session. Unless you have already planned it in advance. Unless you go, I need to edit what I've written up to that date. I'll do that XX day. So, Number three, learn when to stop. And by this I mean sometimes... And I think this goes for all writers, but intuitive writers, I think especially, we get in a rhythm, we keep writing, we don't want to stop, and all of a sudden we're exhausted. And the next day, we may need a full day to fill that well up so we can write again, because we work on a subconscious level. So we have to recharge our subconscious. We have to give our subconscious time to process through the story so that we can write it the next day. And that's not saying you sit there and think about it. That's saying you have to sit there and do other things. Do the dishes, do the laundry, watch a show, read a book, talk to a friend, run errands, and all the time your subconscious is working. So know when to stop during a day. I work long hours, but I'm not writing every single one of those hours. I, I can comfortably write about 4,000 words a day. Anymore, and I start slowing down, and I think I hit the wall at about six to 7,000 words, and generally, if I write that much, the next day, I, I'm drained. I'm too tired. I have not given myself time to recharge the night before. So I try to stop writing, actual drafting material, um, at around 3,500 to 4,000 words a day. That's my, that's my sweet spot. That's my comfortable spot. Every writer will have a different spot. I'm lucky. I'm prolific. I can write fast. It's okay if your sweet spot is 500 words a day. It's okay if it's 1,000 words a day. It's okay if it's 10,000 words a day. You just have to find what's comfortable, that doesn't drain you, and then stop when you're at that point. Uh, number four, listen to yourself. And by this I mean oh, well-meaning advice from fellow authors who watch your process and go, well, why don't you try it this way? Yeah, go, thanks, thanks, but it works for me. Once you have found the process that works for you. Don't question it. Just go with it. Don't fix what isn't broken. Too many times I have tried, you know, something that someone has suggested and it stalled me out. In fact, okay, I, I will tell you a little example. So in feeling like maybe I'm doing this wrong, last year when I was writing Sunbroken, before I wrote Sunbroken, I had been listening to people go, you need to plot out books. And 
I have been writing 25 freaking years. And somehow, in a fit of madness, I decided I needed to try and plot out Sunbroken. So I spent three weeks plotting out Sunbroken. And it just, it was like slogging through mud. It was like, how do I know what's going to happen until I get there? Because that's my general thing. I don't know what's going to happen until I get there. And then I'll know. Um... I may know the highlights, but I don't know how I'm going to get between one highlight to another. So I finally got all the book plotted out, and I started to write, and I bogged down. And it didn't feel natural, and it felt forced, and I was getting grumpy, and I was losing time, and I was worried because the pre-order date was coming up and I needed to write the book and it wasn't writing. So all of a sudden I thought, what have I been doing? What What's going on? I was like, oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't be trying to plot this book. I don't like what's coming out. It feels forced. So I deleted what I had written and it wasn't a whole lot at that point. And I started again without, I threw away the outline, tore it up, threw it away, and started again, just starting to write the book, and boom, there was the book. And then it came out the way it wanted to, and the way it needed to. Um, I had listened to other people too much, and then I began questioning myself, and then I screwed up, and finally, you know, I lost a lot of time on that book and uh, essentially put myself way behind, so I was scrabbling to catch up, because I didn't trust the process that has worked for me for many, many years. So, listen to yourself, not to others. And relating to that, my number five tip, stop trying all the things. Stop trying every single process that you hear about thinking it might be better than what you have. And this has a caveat. If what you are doing works for you, keep it. Stop trying to make it better. It's like there are ways you can make your own process better, but not by throwing it out for something else. If your process is comfortable, and you want to make it stronger, there are ways you can do that without destroying what you are naturally doing. Um, ask yourself, is this a good idea, really? Will this interrupt my writing flow? Will this interrupt my process? Is this too alien to the way I do things so that it's going to um, make me stumble? Before you start trying something new, really sit down and ask, why am I trying this? Maybe you do need a change. Maybe you really feel stifled the way you've been working. Okay, fine. Try something new. But if you just want to try it because you heard it worked for so-and-so, even though your process works for you, or you think it's the big new thing and maybe you should be on the bandwagon, or, you know, the fear of missing out, FOMO. Um, if I don't do it this way, then everybody's, everybody's going to think I'm old-fashioned, or I'm weird, or I'm I'm just quirky, or maybe they'll think I'm not a real writer, writer because I'm doing it this way. Then don't do it. Those are not legitimate reasons for trying something new. That could derail your process and derail your progress. So there we have it. Five tips for the intuitive writer. Fill the well. Don't stop to edit. Learn when to stop for the day. Listen to yourself and stop trying all the things. You know, they're not all going to work. And you have to use a little common sense when you decide whether it will work for you or not. And you may not know whether it's going to work for you, but you can pretty much tell when it's going to interrupt your natural rhythm. And that's what being an intuitive writer is all about, is finding your natural rhythm, 
finding your natural voice and letting it process in a way in a way that for you works um, yeah so there you go I hope that helps a bit come on back next week I'll see you then and take care bye bye